Greetings and welcome, I love iodine. This video is a follow-up to my video called Human Ropeworms Are Not Really Parasites. I do want to apologize uh, for the tone of that video. I was a little snarky in my tone and I was not intending to be. My negative attitude was not towards anybody that is suffering from any health condition or anyone that they know is suffering from a health condition. My issue that I have is that there's online sites selling herbal remedies to cure ropeworms when ropeworms are not a species of parasites. Also, as you can see in my video on Mimosa pudica, which is one of the herbs that's being claimed to be anti-parasitic, there's very little evidence that that herb is effective against parasites. There are many herbs out there that have been used for centuries that are effective against parasites and they can be sourced rather inexpensively and you can also use a lot of anti-parasitic foods. That said, the other concern with Mimosa pudica is that it has anti-fertility effects. It also acts as a very strong diuretic and it does affect blood sugar. So if you're someone that has any issues with blood sugar or if you're on a diuretic or on a medication that your doctor has told you you should not take any diuretics, or if you are someone that does not want anti-fertility um, effects, you need to be aware of those. I think it is a disservice to people to provide information that is not complete. So they, anyway, check out my video on Mimosa Pudica if you wanna learn more about it. But before you take anything as an herbal supplement for anything, I do highly encourage everyone to speak with a trained herbalist in your area. Most towns and regions, there will be an herbal shop that you can go to. Also, you can also get books on it that are very helpful and there's great resources online as well. You know, it is unfortunate that there are people that are willing to put information out there to treat a condition such as ropeworms with something that hasn't been proven to be effective. The one thing we need to concern ourselves with ropeworms, we know it's not a species of parasite. It was discovered in 2009 by people, researchers, that I really believe were trying to do the right thing. If you've listened to one of the authors like ever speak, he sounds completely genuine and really wants to help people. Unfortunately, some people are in this world and they will take advantage of others especially those that are sick because when we are sick we are really looking for an answer i was very ill myself i was infected with um, fish tapeworms intestinal flukes and other things i know what it's like to be struggling with health issues and not know what's going on um i saw treatment with western medical doctors for years and not one ever suggested parasites as a potential cause and i was just getting sicker and sicker as the months and years went on uh, once I found out it was a fish tapeworm and I was able to get rid of it, which was not easy at all, um, my health issues reversed. So, you know, keep those things in mind that if you can get rid of your parasites or reduce your parasite load, you're going to feel better. And keeping that in mind, if you do have parasites in your body and if doing some sort of enemas or, you know, cleanse is going to help, you know, flush some of those, you know, poisons out, they do release toxins into your body and that is going to make you feel better. But keep in mind, if you're seeing the long stringy things that look like ropes, the mucusy things, that, that is mucus. I mean, if you've ever been sick with a cold, you can get some similar looking things. You know, someone had actually told me in one of my comments that they actually got a rope worm out of their nose. And um, I would have to say they just had a really bad cold. And I'm not trying to be snarky on that one. But we really need to be careful with calling everything a ropeworm when there is no genetic um, DNA of a parasite. So, you know, keep those things in mind. Um, I just hope that everyone has a great day. You can check out um, the, the websites, the links and stuff. I'll put them again in this video as well. And read the CDC's um, website. They don't have any information on ropeworms. The WHO has nothing on ropeworms. We just have a few sites out there and the authors whenever they put out the paper we have to understand this was not in a journal this is just a pdf that's online this is not peer-reviewed 
And again, I understand there's some issues with peer-reviewed studies as well, so you don't have to comment on that. I'm very well aware that that's not the gold standard either, even though it is proclaimed to be, it is not even a double-blind controlled study. I mean, that's the gold standard, I guess, for what we have, but there's a lot of flaws in that as well. And if you study experimental design, you have a better understanding how um, results can be manipulated or inaccurate. That's why science needs to be replicated. It needs to be able to be reproducible and it needs to be consistent. And if you're not getting consistent results from study to study, then it means that there's a flaw somewhere along the way. So you can't look at any one study as definitive. You need to look at a whole body of research. You need to look at historical data and evidence, and you need to look around. I mean, we amongst ourselves, people that have actually suffered from health issues, we have a lot of information to share because we have firsthand knowledge, and that is very, very valuable. So if anyone tells you you don't know what you're talking about and, well, you've experienced it, I mean, keep in mind, you do have credibility based on the fact that you've experienced it. Anyway, again, I just want to say about the ropeworms, if you're using aggravating agents to try to kill parasites, whether that's something that you're taking orally or if you're doing enemas, which I'm not against either at all, just keep in mind what you're using. If it's something that's going to irritate the lining of your intestinal tract, whether it be your colon or you know coming orally, it can cause your body to produce mucus. It's trying to protect itself and build up a barrier. And the other thing I do want to comment on, I'll be doing another video about it in the future, it's about leaky gut. So many people are speaking about leaky gut, but they're not looking at the fact that if you have different types of worms, tapeworms, hookworms, many other types of roundworms, they're attaching to you. If they're attaching to you, then they're going to cause tears in your intestinal lining and that is gonna to lead to leaky gut. I'm not saying that's the only cause of leaky gut, I'm just saying it is a cause. So we need to look at all the different causes and we need to eliminate what we can and then if we rule out certain things, then we can actually go on and try to find other things. But in my opinion, if anyone's suffering from an autoimmune disorder or any health issue, celiac disease, gluten intolerance, um, leaky gut, digestive issues, IBS, IBD, there is evidence that shows that parasites cause all the same symptoms. I'll be putting up a video showing how they're the same and if the doctors are not treating the patient or for parasites first, then you may be missing the, the actual true cause. I was told that I had gluten intolerance. Well, I know I had gluten intolerance, but I was told I likely had celiac and they wanted to test me. I had all the symptoms. I mean, I was having the, um, had the auto the immune reaction. But if we look about what they're doing when they take a test for the autoimmune, wait a second, if you have a parasite, your body's producing an immune response, that's a correct thing to do. But if you don't admit that parasites are in your body, you might think, well, my body is attacking myself. It's an autoimmune condition. But what if it's doing the correct thing? And if it's a protozoan parasite, you're not gonna see it. Even in my case, the fish tapeworms, I was, that was the last thing in the world that I ever suspected. I mean, I, I was under the misconception at that point that they were more of a third world problem or something that I would never have to deal with. Or I thought that you would know. I mean, I don't know. I figured if the doctors weren't talking about it, it can't be an issue. But a lot has changed in my thinking. I've learned a lot along the way and I know those things are completely false. So anyway, I just wanted to keep those things in mind that there are the symptoms that are very similar. And it seems that testing for parasites is something that's very rarely done. And you know, that's another reason that the issue with the ropeworm is a concern because since they don't exist, if someone goes into their doctor and wants to test for a ropeworm, the doctor, is not gonna test you for something that doesn't exist and they might dismiss you totally and not let you be tested for any parasites. And that would be a grave disservice. So keep those things in mind. We need to try to get as much information as possible and share it with each other. And again, my intent for making this video and the other videos was to help people. I'm not trying to cause anyone any um, distress. That's not my intention. Anyway, I hope that everyone has a great evening, uh, peace and love, 
and um, I'll be putting out more videos and I will be careful in my tone. I don't want to offend people and I don't want to upset anyone. Okay. So, all right then. I thank you very much for your time.